Welcome everyone, it's Janie from A1 Vacuum and Sewing and I'm getting ready for the sew along that we're going to be doing with these clear blue tiles. Um, tomorrow is our first sew along and what we're going to focus on is we are focusing on the piecing in the hoop. So what you're going to need is, because I mean you look at this and you have no idea how big this is, but I think each one of these squares are going to be five inches and these are probably going to be two and a half by five. I'm guessing. I haven't done it yet. So I'm putting it together right now. What you need to have for tomorrow is you need to have um, all of your background pieces cut. I just picked a beautiful set of fat quarter from uh, Moda. It's called Belle Isle and it is so cute. So all my stuff is pre-cut and I actually pre-cut mine I doubled it. So I'm doing double the number of blocks um, just because I think it's only the end product, the end size. If I recall correctly, I think it's 28 inches. So um, I have a really long table and I figured let me make it twice as big to fit. So all my pieces are pre-cut. We're going to get started. Um, you don't need a whole lot for this. Uh, the thread color you're really not going to see except for the final stitch out that goes around it. And even that's not going to be shown in your final quilt. And um, instead of using no-show mesh, I'm using muslin. Here's my five by seven hoop. You could do multiples in a hooping. So um, if you wanted to do, let me see the final stitch out size. Embroidery field, 4.87 by 4.75. So you could probably put two hoopings into a six by 10. But I'm just going to go ahead and do five by seven and I'll just continue hooping this way. Um, I cut my muslin. My muslin is cut nine inches across with the fabric. So I'm using 90 inch. So I just cut a nine inch strip all the way across. That's what I'm going to be using. And um, if you've done any sew alongs for me for some of these Kimberbell projects, a lot of times I will use muslin instead of no show mesh because I feel like it's softer and I like the way it feels better than the no-show mesh. So let's go ahead. I'm going to put my hoop onto my machine and let me show you what I have cut and laid out. So if we look right over here, there's my fabric and I kind of grouped it. So you're going to do a combination of three different fabrics for each house. So for instance, you could do this house with this doorway with that roof. So you're just going to be mixing up your fabrics. These and I have 48 of these. I think it called for um, 24 if you're just doing the regular size. I have 48 of these. And then these are going to be the ones. Uh, this is for the tree. And these are for the house. And these are your extra squares right here. And then your cornerstones. So um, I just have everything laid out just like that. So I can grab them as I go. And that's what I'm using for my trees. Alrighty. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Let me grab my instructions. So I am going to be using um, KK Ganold 100. You can either, the option for this is, I guess you could tape, um, but they also go ahead and they press too. For me, I really like to use the adhesive spray, and I'm going to show you how I do this. So first of all, let's load the design. I already pulled mine onto my USB stick, and it is going to be a house. So there's a 5x7 house, and so because you're using a 5x7 hoop, and then there's the tree. We're going to do the house first, and then we'll do a tree. And then you'll know what to do. So if you're not able to make the sew along, you're going to have the video, the pre-recorded video. Okay, um, this is my edit page. I'm not going to be editing anything, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit embroidery. I have my 5 by 7 hoop on my machine. I'm going to take my design and move it all the way up. So I want you to choose your 5 by 7 hoop if you have that ability to on your machine. On the Baby Lock and Brothers, you can just go ahead and press the settings button. Mine is already selected by 5. Um, I've already selected my 5 by 7, so that shows me my work area. And I'm just going to go ahead and say okay. 
my hoop is slid on, so I'm just gonna go to layout. Yours might say edit, and I'm gonna move it, and I'm gonna scoot it all the way up. That way I have all of this muslin that I'll be able to rehoop in my next hooping. I'm gonna say okay. And let's go ahead and get started. So I have a white bobbin in, um, a white pre-wound bobbin in, and I'm just gonna be using this color right here. Um, it's like a grayish, it's one of my favorite colors. And first thing it's gonna do, and if you go back here and hit layout or edit again, you're gonna see it's gonna stitch out the template first. So go ahead and hit your start button, stitch out that template, and then maybe go ahead and choose your fabrics. What you're gonna choose is, grab this. The door. So let's say I go ahead and I use this for my door. You're gonna choose the house. I'm gonna go with this blue. And when you look at these, you're gonna have the three by three squares. You're gonna have the skinny pieces. That skinny piece is going to be uh, for the house. And then you're gonna have the big piece, which is going to be for the roof. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose my skinnies, my roof, and then I'll get my white pieces and I'll get those all laid out. Template is done. Let's go ahead and start laying down our pieces. So here's the fabric I have laid out for the first one. So this is going to be the door. These are gonna go on either side. This is going to go on the top. This is going to be, um, you're gonna have two side pieces. You're gonna have a roof. And then you're going to have two more pieces that go up on the top, right? Maybe that's what we'll start out with tomorrow, but that's how you're going to choose it. So you've got your door, which is three by three, the sides that are three by three. You've got the top of the house, and it's, I think it's two and a half by, that one is um, house, 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 two and a half by five and a half. You have the two sides, which are two and a half by four and a half, and two and a half by four and a half, and that is going to be your house. And then we're going to, um, I'm doing two of these. And then you're gonna alternate, and the next house is going to be other fabrics. So we're just gonna go between all of these. Um, and I, like I said, this is a mode of fabric that I'm gonna be doing with mine. So now that we have that kind of laid out and you know where everything goes, let's go ahead and stitch it. Um, so the very first thing that I'm gonna put down is going to be this piece right here. It's going to be the door, and I'm going to give it a little shot of spray to the back. Don't spray at your machine. I have a spray box next to me. And just go ahead and cover over that door. Okay, when we do this, oh, and I want this to kind of be kind of straightened out, you are going to have a trim line which is also a placement line. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch that first, get a good pair of scissors. I'm gonna be using my snips because this is just one layer. So the first thing is going to be my trim line, which is also my placement line. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and trim that up. And you're just trimming to the left side and just pretend like that line just extends all the way up and all the way down. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lay down. So this is the trim. Now we're gonna do the placement. When you place, the pieces go right side down and you center it to your stitch. So my stitch goes from here to here. I'm gonna center it to this piece and it's gonna do a tack down. The tack down is gonna be a quarter inch from that trim placement line. Thank you. 
Now your instructions are gonna tell you, and every single step of this is in your instructions. Um, my recommendation is just to have, like as you lay down, here's your template and it's gonna show you first, we put down this piece, our second piece, third, fourth. So it shows you the order in which we lay down our pieces. It's gonna show you where the stitching is, where to trim. And after you've, um, after we put down our first piece, it says use a mini iron or finger press along the seam line. If you are using an iron, remove the hoop from the machine and press on an ironing board. So what I do, is I actually spray. And this is the only time I spray in the hoop is when I am piecing in the hoop. So I will put my hand here to kind of protect everything because you don't want to get it on your foot, on your needle, on your hoop. And I'm just going to give a little shot of spray right there. If you are not comfortable, do you hear how, I mean, that was nothing. Do you hear how lightly I was spraying? Um, and then I'm going to fold it over nice and firm, give it a finger press, and my piece is going to be nice and flat. Okay, we're going to slide that back on. Next thing it's going to do is it's going to do a trim placement line right here. So I'm just going to go ahead. We are going to trim to the right side of that. Go ahead and trim away this. It's your trim line and it's also your placement line. Just pretend that line goes all the way to the top. Grab your next three by three, center it to the stitch. My stitch starts here and goes there. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna put it too high up or too high far down. You wanna center it to the stitch. So my stitch is like from here to here. No spray until we flip it. You never spray the right side. You only spray the wrong side. Okay, this is gonna be your quarter inch seam. I'm gonna give it a little shot of spray right here. If you do not feel comfortable spraying, just take it, finger press it, fold it over, just like this. You can just finger press if you want, and you can kind of hold it back this way or you could use some tape as well. So if you have room, you can just kind of hold it back, but you don't want it to be loose. You don't want it to be loose and sloppy. So now it's, it's uh, sewing the very top. That's your trim line. It's your trim line first, and then it's, it's also your placement line. We're gonna trim all the way across. I know that stitch doesn't um, go all the way across, but we are gonna trim all the way across like there is imaginary line of stitching. It does not have to be perfect. And next piece to go down, it's gonna be the long skinny one. Don't grab, you have some, um, I call this hot dog versus hamburger. Don't grab your hamburger piece. Grab your hot dog piece. Your hamburger piece, do you see how much bigger it is? You want the hot dog, hot dog bun. Remember, face down, centered to my stitch, which goes from here to here. And now it is going to do the quarter inch seam allowance. Slide that back on, no spray. I'm gonna give it a little shot of spray right here and then I'm gonna push it back. Fold it back. It'll stay, you can give it a little finger press. Okay, next row of stitching, um, and you can see it on your screen. It's gonna stitch right down there. So we're gonna trim down here, and then we're gonna add that side white piece. So I'm gonna go ahead, let it stitch. And don't forget, it's showing you right here. 
it's showing you the order in which the pieces are going down. So we did one, two, three, four. Now we're going to do this side white piece. Okay, trim that excess. And if it is not all the way to that stitch, it is okay. Grab one of your four and a half by two and a halfs, right side down. Do your quarter inch seam allowance. Then we're gonna spray and we're gonna fold it over. We are already on, we're right here. This is piece five. So we did this, we laid it down. I'm gonna get ready. We did the quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna spray it and flip it over. And if you are not a confident sprayer, maybe you have a brand new can that's a little stiff to press. You can use a glue stick too, something like that. I didn't, I didn't spray this one, so see it was starting to buckle. I'm gonna hold it down. Where are now, if you look at the, and, and go between looking at your instructions, looking at your screen right now, you can see where we're gonna stitch right now. So this is gonna be the other side, and we are going to do uh, the trim line. This is called your trim placement line. If you feel more comfortable ironing it, you can iron it. I think that just takes way too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this this and then we're going to get our other two and a half by four and a half white piece depending on which one you are doing we're going to do the quarter inch seam allowance fabric goes I'm using grunge so I just want to make sure I have it right side my stitch goes from here to here so it's pretty centered to my fabric you're laying that edge of the fabric right down on where you did those stitches Get in the mode. We are in piecing in the hoop mode right now, ladies. Give this a little shot of spray. Oh my God, my can is perfect right now. It's just like, I feel like we just know each other so well. Okay, look at your screen. It's doing the long stitch over here. So that's gonna be for the roof. Go ahead and do the trim placement. I'm gonna use this for my roof. There's your trim line. Go ahead and trim it. Lay the roof down, right side down. I didn't even press mine. So as it stitches, I might just give it a little bit of a, just flatten it a little bit. Okay, that's your quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna give it a little shot of spray right here. And then if you look at your screen, it's going to do uh, the placement trim line in the upper left. It's going to go right there. How cute is this? It's so cute. We're going to trim that away. And then you're gonna place another one of your two and a half by four and a halfs. Pull that back. Let's go ahead and trim that. As though this line magically extends.
I can trim that too. We're going to lay one of these down, center it, make sure it's right side down. Now it's going to do your quarter inch seam. The entire stitch out is actually about three minutes. Back, give it a little shot of spray. Now we're going to do, um, if you look at your screen, now it's going to do the other side. Go ahead and just do your tack down. This is your trim placement line. Trim it. And just pretend that line just extends all the way. Grab your last two and a half by four and a half. Let me make sure I grab the right side. That's the right side. Center it to that stitch. And do your quarter inch seam allowance. And then we're gonna flip and fold it back and then it's gonna do an outline stitch and we are done. Easy peasy. actually hoping this was traditional piecing. I just don't get enough opportunity to do that. So, um, but piecing in the hoop is fun. And now we're just going to do an outline stitch around the whole thing. And then we'll press and we'll trim these all. One down. It's really adorable. So I am gonna go ahead and take this out of the hoop and then we are gonna re-hoop. So this one is all done. Let's go ahead and let's hoop up and get ready to do a tree. Once you know how to do the houses, they're all the same. When we go to trim this down, um, this is going to be our trim line. Although you're going to use a ruler. Don't, don't follow the lines because sometimes the fabric pulls a little bit. Um, but let's re-hoop again. And let's do a tree. So by leaving it on here, you're going to save all of that. There's just not going to be as much waste. And I'm going to hoop it just like this. I'm going to open up my hoop a little. And I usually hoop it so a little bit is coming down. Like that. This is how you maximize. And if you're doing no-show mesh, you do the same thing. I'm just going to hand tighten. You can use your hoop tightener too, but I don't want to distort this part up here too much. And now let's go back to the machine and we are going to go ahead and do a tree. All right, now it is tree time. So let's go ahead and load our tree first. So I'm going to hit embroidery, pocket. I'm going to go to my USB and here is my tree design. I'm going to do two trees at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and set it. So you, that's, this is why I like setting my, um, my hoop size, that, that gives you your workspace. I'm gonna hit edit, 
rotate. And you know, if you hit move, all you get are your move keys. But if you hit rotate, you get your rotate and your move. So in this case, let's hit rotate. I'm going to rotate it once so the pointy end is going this way. It doesn't matter, but maybe it'll help if we all do it together. So, and then I'm going to move it straight up to the very top of my workspace. So right to where that line is hitting the top of my line. And then I am going to hit OK. This right here is going to make a copy. I'm going to hit that button. I'm going to hit rotate. I'm going to center it. This is going to center it to my work area. That way I'm even uh, left and right. And now I'm going to just move it down a little bit. There's going to be a lot of overhang, so I'm just going to bring it down maybe about an inch in between. So there's a little bit of space. So it's not totally snugged up against that. And I'm going to say OK. You can fit two in a hooping, so why not do both of them? Um, if you want, you can, uh, we can group it too. So I'm going to go ahead and hit embroidery. On my machine, I can do what's called grouping. So do you see right here it does template and then all the applique, template and all the applique? Well, as long as my designs aren't overlapping, I can hit layout. This two to one is going to group. So now I have all of my template and then, then we're gonna do all the same steps all at once. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. If your machine does not have that feature, you're just gonna do one at a time. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about our fabric. So here's my fabric and I'm using um, grunge and paper and then this is just a really pretty green that I had in the store. And um, I think looking at the picture is gonna make it easiest. You see we have one, two, three, four trees. I'm doubling it so I'm gonna have eight trees. I cut 48, did I cut 48? It looks like so much more than I, I can't remember how many I cut. Um, eight times eight, 64. Uh, because what you're going to need is you are going to need, here is our tree with the numbers, one skinny, one little one, one little green. Here's our little green. And then you're going to need one, two, three, three of the bigger greens. So we have the little greens and we have the bigger greens. So you're going to need three of the bigger greens. So one skinny, little, and three of the bigger ones. So now we have those. And then as far as these, they're all the same size. And you need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm not going to count them out. I'm just going to grab a little stack and put them together. And we are ready to go. And then I'll put my other one together too. So we'll just do that. And our next one is going to be one for the trunk and three for the tree part. So here we are ready. And let's get stitching. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start. It's going to do both templates. And then we'll start laying down our pieces. And again, we are going to be, um, just get your snips and we're going to be trimming, placing, stitching your, seam, your quarter inch seam allowance spraying and folding it over. So uh, this is actually six minutes of stitching, but that takes a whole lot longer because we're gonna be laying down and trimming and all of that. So here's our template. And if you find it confusing, just follow your instructions step by step. It's going to tell you exactly what to do, which piece we're laying down, and then the directions to follow. I'm just going to be looking at my screen. So whenever we do piecing in the hoop, because um, I've done a lot of it with Kimberbell Club, I find that there's like 25% of people find this super, super confusing. And if you're one of those 25%, then just keep the instructions by you and you're gonna have to follow it step by step. If it helps you, you could go ahead and, um, you know, do this, do this step, check mark. Then do this step, place tree piece one, right side up complete and check mark. So whatever you have to do to help you stay organized, just do it and it's okay and don't worry.
I know that these are my little greens and these are gonna be the tree trunks. These are the only pieces that I'm gonna be spraying on the wrong side and placing down first. So I'm gonna give them a shot of spray right now. And if you look at this side of my table, I just went ahead and sorted all of my pieces. So I have all my houses, my homes, my houses ready to go. So you might want to do that too, so you're not trying to decide as you go and that you have a good variation. So for me, there are one, two, three, four, there's five houses, so I'm going to be doing 10 houses total. Perfect. Let's lay down the uh, trunks first. That's the first thing that's going to happen. And if you hit your edit layout button, it's going to show you. So we're going to lay those down and then it's going to stitch, it looks like, on the left side. Left side. And seriously, look how big this piece is. I could just do that one piece. I'm feeling a little wasteful. I'm going to cut this in half because I didn't not need this gargantuan piece. Um, yeah, let's lay it down. You know what? I'm just going to lay it down just in case we need it. And just center it over that trunk. Just in case. Last thing I want to have you do is have you have not enough fabric, and then you're going to be mad at me. Okay, um, it is going to sew on the left side of each one, and you can also look here. So, and it's going to show you. We're going to do this white piece next, then this one, then a piece of the tree, and then five, six, seven, eight. So it shows you the order in which we're going. Get your, your snips ready. We're going to go ahead and trim these, and then you're going to be laying down white. So it's gonna go tree, white, white, tree, white, white, tree, white, white. Okay, so I'm gonna snip whatever is. Okay, look at your fabric, right side down, centered to your stitch. Quarter inch seam allowance. Now let's spray that whole piece. I'm just going to spray right about there. This would be one of my superpowers. It's my incredible spraying ability. I'm a really good sprayer. Something to brag about. I'm going to fold it back and fold this one back too. Oops. You can finger press it. If you're ironing, go for it. Um, now you can see where it wants to stitch. So now we're doing the right side of the green fat. Is this? For a second I thought, well, that, did I lay that down wrong? Okay, so now we're gonna do, when I say the right side, I know it looks like the top. That's the right side of the tree. Good thing I didn't cut my fabric down. So we're gonna do our, this is our trim line. Now we're gonna trim. Two white pieces, face down, 
on that placement line. So that trim line is also your placement line. First it's your trim line, then it's your placement line. No spray until we flip. Oop, look at that. Thought that thread was just a stray thread. Okay, tack down your quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, spray and fold. I'll slide it back a little bit. All right, now it is going to go ahead and it's gonna sew all the way across. I'm just gonna fold this back like this so it doesn't catch that. After it does this, I'm gonna hit the stop button so I can let this kind of fold over. Actually, there, don't even have to stop it. If you feel like you're not gonna be able to do that, um, just hit the stop button. Okay, that is your trim line. Remember, first thing we do is we do the line and we trim. Extend that line like it's an imaginary straight line. Now we're putting down another green piece. And trim this back just a little bit. Don't trim it all the way. I'm just gonna trim it just a little bit. Okay, grab two of your bigger green pieces, center it to that line that is your placement line. And then this one too. Tack down. It's your quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to spray, fold it back. Now it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna sew um, this side first. Oh, wrong, sorry. And, um, but it doesn't make a difference. It's gonna do this side, we're gonna put our white piece down. Okay, we're gonna trim above that. Okay, ready? Pretend like that line just extends all the way, like it's a ray. And this too, all the way down. 
and trim this. Okay, white piece down. Right side down. Don't forget, we're always doing right side down. Center it to that stitch. And this one is gonna get centered to that stitch. It's gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance. This is piece number five. So right here, we're doing piece number five. So we have five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, spray and fold it back. I'm just gonna cut this back a little bit. And I think next time when I do this, I'm gonna leave a little bit more space in between. It's a little bit too much overlap, sorry. Alrighty. Let's go ahead, it's gonna trim, it's gonna stitch this way. So I'm gonna fold this back. And then we're gonna trim over here. Okay, let's go ahead and trim this away. Right. Now we're going to put our other white piece down. Okay, center it to that last stitch, face down. And it's going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance. There we go. Okay, spray, fold it back. That was pieces number six. We have six left to go. Okay, it is gonna stro so so straight across right here. I'm gonna just fold this back for right now and I'll stop it when it's done. And then I'll let this fold back for the other side. Just hit your stop button anytime after it's done with that. Now I'm gonna just fold this back, fold this over and then let it stitch this down. Okay, we're gonna trim right across the top of these. 
And then we're going to be putting down piece number seven. And that extends up. It's okay. Just leave it. It doesn't have to be totally straight. Okay, we're gonna lay down a green piece. Oh, let me tidy up here. I'm getting kind of mess, messy. Okay, green piece is gonna go down first. I'm just gonna fold this piece out of the way. Center it to that stitch. This is your uh, quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna hit stop. As soon as you hear a cut, you can hit stop. It's not gonna, it's gonna go where it needs to go, but it is not gonna stitch. So I'm just gonna tuck that back and tuck that back. Let's get that out of the way. Let's put this down. All right. Slide that back on and let it do the quarter inch seam allowance. We're gonna spray and fold it back. Whoa, that was a lot of spray. It's okay. Sometimes that happens. I mean, look at that perfect point that you get when you're piecing in the hoop. Okay, it's gonna stitch on the top part over there and then we're gonna lay down piece number eight. I'm gonna let it do that stitch and then I'm gonna stop it so I can lay this stuff all down. Gonna just move that, move that, lay that down, and lay that down, and hit start. Okay, that's your trim line. Okay, lay down your white. One, two. Center it to that line. I'm gonna do that one and then I'll lay my other one down. I'm gonna hit stop. Let me get all this out of the way. And let's lay this down. That is my right side. Center it. Okay, seam allowance, quarter inch. Spray and fold them back.
Oh, and it's not, it's going to want to sew right down here first. So let me get that out of the way. I'm going to let it sew that whole side and we're going to trim it. And then we're going to trim and then we'll put our other piece of white down. That is going to be piece number nine. And then we're going to have one more row to do. Three pieces per row. All right, let's go ahead and trim this like there's an imaginary line going straight or semi-straight. I'm going to do this one next. Lay down, center it to that stitch, do your quarter inch seam allowance, and then I'm going to stop it so I can lay my next piece down. Actually, I didn't have to stop it, so it's fine. Oh. You know what we do have to do though? I need to actually lay my piece down. Here we go. Center it to that stitch. I have a little snip in there. This is all my leftover fabric from Serenity Prayer. It's all the sides and everything I had left over. I had so much. So that's all this white fabric. Usually I just throw it all the way, but I needed little pieces that were, you know, two and a half inches, two inches. So I was able to save all of this. Oop, I gotta move this towards me a little bit. Okay, it's gonna stitch straight across and we're gonna put down our last green big piece. Oop. Not sure what happened there, but let's go ahead and clip that. We've got a little icky ball here. Sometimes that happens. I'm just going to re-thread. Let's see. Do we have a big fur ball up there? I don't think so. Make sure we are threaded right. We are. Let's just go ahead and re-thread. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to check my bobbin. Bobbin looks good. I'm going to fold all of this back, fold this down, and let it stitch straight across, and then we're going to trim. And we're going to put our green piece down, and then two more whites on the top. Okay, imaginary straight line. Lay down your two pieces of green. I mean, this is left over from the other one. This would totally be enough to flip up and over. But why do that? That would be too conservative. Because <laughs> look how big these pieces are. I can't help myself. I'm going to try it. 
center it to that stitch. That should be plenty, right? And it should make it all the way over here too. I'm gonna do it. Let's just try it. Because the white's gonna cover that up. Let's try it over here too. Go from here to here. This is what's left over. Okay, I'm gonna give it a little shot of spray. So these are like the triangles that are left over from when I trimmed. I've just been throwing them all in the trash, but look at that. That is going to be plenty. Okay, it's gonna sew the trim line. We're gonna trim everything away. So if you really want to, I mean, you're gonna have plenty of fabric if you use those triangles that you cut away. I just thought, I thought I'd try it out. You do not have to do that. You have all of those pieces that you pre-cut. Might as well use them. Okay, we're gonna lay down two more, right side down, centered to that placement stitch. This is your quarter inch seam allowance. And then we're also gonna have to put one right here. I was just challenging myself to see if I could do it. Okay, now it's gonna sew this part right here. So I'm just gonna fold that back really quickly. Let it do this stitch. Then we're gonna trim. I mean, that is pretty close. And that might make you feel uncomfortable. Then we're gonna trim everything to the left of that stitch. And we're gonna lay our last pieces of white down. Imaginary straight, straight line. And we're almost done with these two trees. So I started that, I think it's probably gonna take 15 minutes per tree. Cause I started that probably, um, Not sure, not totally sure. But that's my prediction, half an hour per tree. I mean, 15 minutes per tree. But I do like combining and I think I will continue to do that. Okay, trim line. Or actually this is your quarter inch seam allowance. We're gonna spray, fold it back, 
and then do the stitch that goes all the way around the outside of these. All right, I'm gonna give them a little bit of spray and then we'll do the final outline stitch. Okay, outline stitch. It's going to do this one first. I'm going to hold these out of the way. And like I said, I will do combining in the hoop. Um, but I think I'm going to do... I'll just make sure they're spaced out a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and hit stop. Let it reposition over here. I can see another little ball up. Let me go ahead and grab that again. Not sure. All right, outline stitch. You are gonna press, and then you're pretty much gonna trim on that line, but I would trim to the ruler, and um, the final size for this is going to be, if you look at page, it says uh, stitch to the cut line, remove the block, and trim exactly on the cut line, but like I said, I never trim exactly on the cut line, because most likely, it's not going to be completely straight. What you are going to, that little stitch came out. What you are going to cut to, let me grab my ruler and we can measure it. Looks like this is going to be two and a half by four and a half. Is that right? Two and a half by four and a half? Yes. Two and a half by four and a half. So get it as close to, uh, you're going to fussy cut it, and just make sure it's about two and a half by four and a half before you cut, press. So we'll go ahead and cut these apart, and then you're going to be cutting almost on those lines, but just make sure that you are paying attention to your ruler, and I will see you at our sew along.